What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. It is 10.47 at night and I am tired, but I have a pretty cool video for you today. We're doing five interview questions for JavaScript. Just looking at some gotchas, just looking at some simple ones, some maybe a little bit more difficult, but just testing your knowledge of JavaScript. I've been asked a lot of these in my experience with whiteboarding, whether that was like an online hacker rank test, multiple choice answers, whiteboarding, there might have been logic related to it in a take home code test that I had. But they're really common, basically essential JavaScript questions that I think you guys should know. So that's what we're gonna review today. I'm really tired, I've been up since four, so when I'm doing this video and if I mess up or I say something dumb, just remember that I'm tired. With sacrifice comes meaning and with struggle comes purpose. So we're gonna make this video happen. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. We have a Discord, come chat with me and the community. Link for that's in the description. I have a Patreon. If you wanna support an online creator that's trying to help you guys, maybe consider me next time. Shout out to all the patrons that do support the channel, by the way, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. I think that's it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys learn a thing or two. I'm sure you guys will correct me in the comments because that's, that's how it goes. So I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, first up, we'll start with an array question. This is a pretty common question. Just kind of weeds out the beginners. We're going to be doing it with ES6 and regular JavaScript. So the question is, how do you add something to the beginning of an array? And how do you add something to the end of an array? So let's do that first here. So we'll do my array, push, add something to the end of an array. It appends a new item. We can actually mouse over this here in VS Code. Appends new elements to an array, returns the new length of the array. So we want to push the word end. And then we want to add something to the beginning. In order to do that, we need to use the unshift method, like so. Uh, inserts new elements at the start of the array. And then if we console log this, copy this, paste this into the console here. You see start A, B, C, D, end. Brand new array. This modifies the original array. Just keep that in mind. It doesn't create a new array. It modifies the original array and then you get this output here. So let's do it with ES6. Let's do something a little bit more complicated. Take a look at some ES6 here. So how would you do it with ES6? Well, there are a couple ways to do it. We could do like this, come here. So this right here is called the spread operator. You can look that up in ES6. We'd do this, like this. To end that will add something to the end, or we could do this. So you can see it still works just the same, and you saw these modifications previously here. So this would add it at the beginning, right? So this takes the group of, a, of the items in the array, and then you're inserting something in front of it. This takes the groups, items in the array, inserts something after it, and then before and after. So pretty self-explanatory. That was this array question. All right, next up, I've gotten this question before. How do you create a private variable in JavaScript? There's no real way to do that except to mess with the scope of JavaScript. So in order to do that, we need to create a variable that lives inside the local scope of a function. So what we'll do here, is we'll create another function here, return function, and inside this function, we'll do return private. So set this, variable and then if we console log it so another function here it's inside of this function scope so you can't access it if we set it to this variable 
set this function equal to this variable, then we run this, then it will run this, which will in turn run this, which will in turn return the private variable. So let's copy this, let's paste it. Super secret code. So if I don't do that, if I just try to run it, it won't work. return private. We can't actually see the value of it. So we, we won't know what it says. We, we run this and then it just hits this and it, you see this function. So we have to do it the other way by reassigning it and running that, which will run secret variable. All right, so I get this question. What is the output of this function? Well, this is a little bit tricky. It has to do with closures here, but in short, the output will be the number three. So if we run this, it is the number three. And so we can we can walk ourselves through this here. So we have the function outer and a function inner, so a function inside of a function, and then this function runs, and then this outer function runs. So this is irrelevant up here. Nothing, nothing really happens. This is just a distraction that gets overridden here and it gets overridden again here. So this is actually not doing anything. This isn't setting anything. This is just overriding this original one here. And we have this function inner num plus plus. So this number two is outside the scope of this inner, which will give undefined there. And then you have var num three, which will just end up returning. So this has to do with closures. This function runs, which is basically console logging the number three. And then this outer function runs here, which runs this inner function, which gives us this output. A little bit confusing. Just follow the order operations here. And, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a red herring there just to distract you. And this is also there to distract you. But this num plus plus can't access this, so closures. All right, here's one with a type of type of one. What will this return? Well, give you a second. It returns string. Why does it return string? Let's check to make sure that it does. So it returns string. Why does it do that? It's more about what it goes down to, what it I would say compiles down to, but that's not the right word. I can't think of it because it's it's late. But if you look at it like this, this will make more sense. So order of operations, we do the inner parentheses first here. Type of one will give you a number. And then type of number will give you string. It's actually the same thing. String. So we can run it step by step. Type of one gives a number. Type of number gives a string. So that's a step by step process of what's going on here. We have one last one here. Let's take a look at that. What will the output here be? So we're using this. We have an object, hero object the name John Doe has a method on it, which returns this dot name. And then we're doing still secret identity hero dot get secret identity. And then we're running still secret identity hero get secret identity. So what will this return? Let's find out. Uh, let's explain what's happening. All right, so we get undefined and then we get John Doe here. So we can figure out how that's working. Hero dot get secret identity. So hero dot get secret identity, and then we're running this. That will give us returns this dot name, which is John Doe. So if we do this instead, now 
Now we get John Doe twice. So we have to rebind hero here. We have to say, stick the hero onto stolen secret identity for it to return twice. So because we set it to a new variable, we have to add that bind. So you can see down here, if we just run it, hero.secret get identity works by itself because we haven't reassigned it. We haven't removed, we haven't extracted the hero from it. Therefore, we don't have to use the bind. Here we need it, so we have access to this keyword. So that was it. Those were five common JavaScript interview questions, just having to do with a little bit of gotchas. Now, for some people, it might be easy. For some people, it might be difficult. I actually had to figure out the answer. I, you know, I struggled a bit trying to remember, and I had to think through it, and it's even more difficult when you're on the spot. So these are just kind of the nuances of JavaScript specifically, not so much to do with algorithms, but more of how JavaScript is working underneath the hood. It's always good to know these things so that you can debug. So hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, click that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you guys wanna see. I'm making a list right now of user and viewer videos, what they like to see, and I'll make it happen. So you guys wanna see some tech interview stuff. Here's one video for you. Otherwise guys, I'll see you in the next video.